Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So this is my current watercolor art journal and I've been working on it for about two weeks now, sketching every day. It can be very simple, one little sketch on a day. Sometimes if I have more time and energy, I do one page or more than one page. And here I'm ready to finish filling up this page spread. Let's go. Here I have a bottle of traditional Chinese black vinegar in the kitchen and I always love sketching glass objects. So before I start putting line work on paper, I spend a minute or two envision the size and placement with hand gestures. And when sketching a bottle, I always like starting with the lid first, the neck the left and right side and the bottom is nice and round for most bottles. And okay, so because the bottle is glass, it's transparent, we can see the line of the liquid outside and inside the other way, kind of like a leaf shape. And now I'm just drawing this large label and finishing the details for this smaller label here around the neck. Add some shiny streaks on, the, on both sides. And just finishing adding the words or characters on the label. It means old black vinegar. Add some shiny streaks using broken lines and draw a platform. And that's it for the drawing. Now I'm ready to paint watercolors. So as always, I'm wetting the whole area with clear water by very gently squeezing my Hobain water brush. I just added the leftover green here and there or turquoise because sometimes some types of glass, they have this green, blue, turquoise tone. And now adding this Nice vibrant orange red for the label. Very nice contrast with a glass color for the lid too. Now I'm ready to mix the color for the black vinegar. It looks black, but it's actually a very deep tone of brown. So I just mix in a lot of ultramarine blue into burnt sienna to get this super dark shade of brown. And you can see I'm using very thin brush strokes to skip around that shiny part of glass. And the surface of the vinegar inside the bottle is actually pretty light according to kind of reflection of the glass. The surface of the vinegar inside has a slightly lighter tone. So I mix in a bit more water into the dark brown. So now second layer, I mix in even more ultramarine blue into the burnt sienna so this color is almost almost black very dark so add it on and again skipping around the highlight spots very carefully a little bit darker for the surface of the vinegar inside a little bit stain around the neck so that part is diluted color and just adding a bit of shade using leftover blue for the labels a little bit on the uh, left hand side the shade is on the left hand side because the light comes from the right hand side so when you're sketching stuff just be aware of the direction of the light add a little bit more darker tone for the lid just another layer of stronger contrast shade here okay so now i'm ready to paint the shadow of this bottle so now just kind of getting this reflective turquoise here glass it has a really reflective shadow and the shadow is not that solid compared to solid objects. 
glass is transparent and just a darker ring around the bottom and that's it very light shadow and here is the finished sketch of the vinegar bottle and i still have a lot of space to fill and my next subject matter is spicy pickles made by our family friend so considering this narrow space on the page is not possible to draw the jars side by side so i decided to draw the jar on the left hand side a little bit higher on the page again starting with the lid and the body shape and now i decided to place this other jar a little bit lower here it's different compared to the uh, real life arrangement i think this way it looks more playful than the side by side arrangement okay so after the outlines i'm starting to add the inner details the detail for the lid and now i'm starting to draw these random organic slices inside the jar here drawing pretty quickly so i'm kind of summarizing those forms overlapping squeezing against each other i'm not worried about if i miss one or two slices or just put them in the wrong place or anything this is just my impression of what i see really enjoying this process okay so this one is done i'm ready to move on to the details for this jar here the rings for the lid and then the form is pretty similar compared to the uh, to the other jar and just filling in the little gaps with solid black ink to show a sense of density so just connecting one shape after another mainly looking at the stuff in the jar and draw without looking at the paper very much and now i am writing a little note so because this is our journaling we can add as much writing as we want and now i'm ready to paint watercolors again so i'm going to paint the jars first but wetting the areas first with clear water and I just mix orange with yellow ochre to get this light orange color this one contains more of a yellow ochre tone so this is the first layer also mixing a, quite a bit of water into the paint pigment and using the leftover color on my palette to paint the lids the, the leftover green and the leftover blue blue green tone so that's the first layer for the pickles now just waiting for the, the first layer to dry a little bit now second layer wet on wet i just mix red into the original orange color to show the hot peppers inside now the second layer contains more paint pigment and less water so as you can see it looks denser mixing a bit of burnt sienna just so i get a darker tone so as you can see we don't need that many colors to do a beautiful painting so now i'm just playing around with very few colors so i've used yellow ochre orange red burnt sienna and a tiny bit of blue so four to five colors i was able to paint this jar of pickle and now i'm adding another layer of denser green for the lid and for the bottom too of the glass jar a little bit shade here and there very tiny brush strokes and just a bit more bluish tone for the left side of the lid because the the light comes from the right side okay and just leaving those tiny little two streaks of highlight on top of the lid it's metallic okay 
And now I am ready to add the shade, also the second layer for this jar of pickles. So I mix this color with yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and a little bit ultramarine blue. I'm accentuating a lot of shade for the left side of the jar because um, as I mentioned before, the light comes from the right side. So the left side is in shade. Okay, so now this jar looks even more three dynamic. Just adding a bit more little shades for the lid around the ring and the left side. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Now I'm going to paint a really light platform using a mix of orange and magenta just to show the feel of spiciness of the pickles. Very watery layer. And now I'm adding the shadows. So I mix the shadow color by mixing ultramarine blue and a bit of purple and some green. Nice and light and darker around the bottoms. That's it. And here is the look of my finished sketch and the look of my art journal pages so far. Next, I have those two spaces to fill. And moving on, I'm going to sketch this little packet of instant cereals. The yellow checkerboard pattern is pretty interesting. Okay, so I'm going to sketch this little packet right here on the upper corner. Starting with a very simple rectangular outline. And the folds around the edges. So many lines of folds around the sides, a little bit wrinkles here and there to suggest dimension. And now just drawing these curvy lines of the checkerboard pattern. So these are not really straight lines because the surface is curved. These lines are a bit curvy. Okay, now that's, that's it for the line work. Very simple. Now I'm ready to paint. I'm beginning with the gray shade tones using leftover color. And then putting a mix of um, lemon yellow and medium yellow to paint the little squares here and there. And as you can see, I'm leaving tiny spots of these yellow squares with the uh, white to show the shine of the plastic. And just grabbing some leftover blue-gray tone to add a bit of um, shadows. And that's it. Now I am painting a light blue platform so this packet can stay better on the page. Just add final retouches of shade around on the top of the packet. Sometimes simple things can be tricky to sketch, to paint. Okay, and just quickly paint the shadow around with leftover color. And that's it. That's the look of my art journal page spread. And now for the top of the page spread, I just drew a rectangle frame right here. And I'm just going to sketch the view outside one of my windows. Well, the sky, there's nothing in it. It's very uninspiring. It's an overcast day, but I can still make it meaningful. And with my sensations. All right, so as always, I begin with the line work. So kind of visualizing the size and placement first before I start. Now I'm drawing this foreground element. This evergreen tree on the right side. So I want to include this tree because it adds a sense of depth. Just drawing these holes in between the branches, these little spaces, random shapes. I know a large tree in the foreground has thousands of details. We don't have to include everything. Just include, you know, the parts that I see that is most um, dominant and that's it. Now I'm moving on behind to draw the rooftop of this house. 
pretty simple, just the rooftop and this tri triangular shape, mostly covered by the tree branches. And there are some trees behind with bare branches. And then there's another chimney of the house on the left hand side, again with this triangular rooftop structure. Texture for the little roof here. Add more texture and add more tree branches and twigs behind. So even in the pretty simple scenery, there are a lot of sense of depths going on. And just finishing drawing the rooftop of this house and add these little uh, things on top and the very quick textural lines for the roof. A couple more trees behind. Add the texture lines for this house rooftop. And that's it for the line work. Now I'm ready to paint again. The sky is very gray on an overcast day, but it doesn't mean it's just boring and lifeless. I see the color as a bluish gray. So I just mix this color with ultramarine blue and purple. I mix in a lot of water. Sometimes with less water and more paint pigment, I get darker streaks of this bluish gray. So it looks more subtle and sensational. All right, the sky is pretty much done. Now I'm just painting the rooftops with burnt sienna, mixing with a little bit of ultramarine blue, so I get this dark tone of brown. And now I'm ready to paint the trees, meridian green, mixed with a bit of a burnt sienna to get this dark tone of green, very organic for the trees here and there and for this evergreen tree too using these choppy brush strokes to show the texture even better and because this large evergreen tree is in the foreground it needs more sense of depth so I just mix in more burnt sienna into Viridian green and a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue too to make this green tone even darker. So a darker tone on top of a lighter tone just immediately gives a sense of depth. Just add some final polish, some shade here and there with very light washes on top. And that's it. And here is the finished look of my original spread. It looks very exciting. I really like this page composition. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my video, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. And I will see you again very soon. Have a great day.